Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I am going to channel Glenn Fry from the Eagles. Now, someone had requested this before, so I'm going to use your questions to prompt this channeling session. Now, I didn't even know who Glenn Fry was. Go ahead throw things at the screen now. I didn't know, I didn't know. And the other night, my husband came into the room, I was doing some work on an online class on a computer, laptop, you know, chilling, kind of listening to music and that. And he comes into the bedroom and he says, hey, hey, I got something for you to watch. And he turns on this Netflix, like documentary or concert series thing. And it was the Eagles. He said, hey, you said that you like the Eagles because the other night we were, we like came across a song or something and it was good. I'm like, oh, this is so good. I'm like, oh, this is the Eagles. He said, yeah, I'm like, oh, I never make the connection, you know? And so he said, hey, I, you know, I got something for you to watch or listen to while you're, you know, working. And I'm like, okay. So he turned it on and I was like, wow, this is good. So I was really paying attention to it. And I kind of put my stuff aside and we sat and we watched it for a while and I'm like, wow, this guy's really good. Who is this guy? Like, I don't know who these people are. And he's like, oh, that's Glenn Fry. And I'm like, oh, okay. Somebody asked me to channel him. I said, he must be dead. <laughs> he said, yeah, he is. he is. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna channel him. After, now that I kind of know who he is, like his face, I heard him sing. I felt this personality. I'm like, okay, yeah, I could channel Glenn Fry from the Eagles, sure. And let me just say too, that's how much I don't follow stuff. Just an example for you, another another example, because I give you so many. Um, so Don Henley, I know his voice, and, but I never, I never really put it together that he was part of the Eagles. Like I never followed the band or was a big fan, but all of these songs that they've sang, for decades like I know them all and I'm like oh my gosh it's so crazy it's kind of like journey for me like oh wow you know you don't really know who everybody is in the band necessarily but you know the music and so I'm like wow that's cool so here we go with the channeling all I know is his voice great music and that's all I know okay so I got my laptop because I have to uh use the questions that two of you sent to me all right, so let's see, make this really big so I can read it since I don't have my glasses on. So this is from Miss McPhoebe, who submitted these questions for the channeling session with Glenn Fry. First question is, where, were you ready to go? What was your experience of the last two months of your life? Interesting, okay. All right, so let's bring in Glenn Fry, if he's one, oh yeah, he comes in right away. He like unplugs. So I don't know if his guitar was plugged in or something, but he unplugs and kind of comes in and it's like we're almost doing an interview, like a TV magazine interview thing. All right, so he says, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And he does look a little more casual than I expected. Um, got a t-shirt underneath a button up shirt and the shirt isn't, it's not really plaid, but it's like checkered kind of, um, kind of casual jeans. Um, casual but nice, you know, dressed nice. And he smells good. Like there's a, I don't know, if, cologne. Like he has a scent to him and um, looks great for his age, looks tan. I don't know if he's from California or Florida, but he um, certainly looks like it, California or uh, the West Coast. Feels like home. Something Nevada, New Mexico. I see the southern part of the coast, the west coast. Um, all right, so I can really see you. Okay, so we have got fans and I have to say that I listen to you. We have fans that submitted questions. I watched uh, a performance in Australia. I think it was Australia and yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was great to listen to and to really appreciate. He said, oh, thank you. He said, thank you. It's fun. Um, he said, it's fun to be able to do what you love, isn't it? It's just, it's, it's just, I mean, what more can you ask for? 
he says. What more can you ask for to be able to do what you love? And to do it with guys that you like too. You know, be around the people that you like too. I mean, that that doesn't hurt. He says, that doesn't hurt. Um, he's showing me something about his dad. He mentions his dad. Not sure what the deal is with dad. I'm actually recording this on May 13th, 2020. So I don't know if the date is significant for him with his dad. I don't know if his dad crossed over on this date also, or if there's a significance, but he mentions his dad, like I see his dad. Um, and then I see something about baseball, I don't know what that is. And let's see if there's any, is there anything else that you wanna show me? The color, I don't know what this means. So I'm seeing something clairvoyantly, orange like a pumpkin. So I don't know if it's a pumpkin or an actual orange. So this is going to sound so crazy, but either it's Florida, orange, Florida, and then baseball again. I don't know what that's about. And then is it maybe spring training? That might be. Maybe, maybe his dad and him, maybe they were baseball fans or something. I don't know what the deal is. But I see orange, which it could also be October or also be like around Halloween. So a date, you guys. So that's how it works, by the way, with clairvoyance. You get information in symbol or metaphor, and then you have to kind of make the connection. So if I'm having a session with you, I would share this information. And you'd say, oh, it's spring training in Florida. Or you'd say, oh, um, my son's birthday is in, you know, right by Halloween. That kind of a thing. Okay. All right. So, or the month of October means something to me, for example, it would be. Okay. So Glenn, I have some questions for you. And um, it's coming from Miss McPhoebe. I'm not sure where she's from though. She doesn't say where she's from, what state or country, etc. But thank you for submitting the questions. Um, she's asking specifically about your death. So is it okay to start there? I feel like super abrupt. Hey, let's talk about how you died. Um, why not? He says, why not? No sense of beating about around the bush. He said, let's just get right to it. Let's cut to the chase. <laughs> Okay. He's like, go ahead, go ahead. You know, he's like, I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Okay. Good. You guys just laid back. Glenn Fry, very laid back. Okay. All right. So he says, okay. So Miss McPhoebe asks, were you ready to go? So basically what was your experience the last two months of your life? He says, nah, you ever, is anyone ever really, are, are you ever are really ready to go? I, I never really thought about maybe how, how my life would end or what would actually end it. I, I didn't expect to, oh, it's interesting, you guys. He's saying, I didn't expect to last as long as I did. I think he's talking about the second part of your question, which is about the last two months of his life. He didn't expect to last, for it to last as long as it did. What do you mean by last as long? Like life to last as long? The struggle, he said, the, my body. I just couldn't shake it. I just couldn't shake it. Um, I just couldn't get better. He's saying I couldn't get better. I, I figured eventually my health would take me out, but I didn't know or didn't have any kind of a real plan or a sense of how that might look or how that might be. He said how it might play out is what he says, how, how that might play out. I don't think anybody ever really wants to think about that, you know, like those deep questions, but I feel as though I, I can say that I had a good life, that I was fortunate and that I, you know, had my butt saved and he actually says a different word that begins with an A quite a few times, you know, a few times, a few, a few, um, maybe not many, but a few times that. I can look back on and appreciate and know, he says, I know there's a God or a higher power. He said, I, I, I know that, had a sense of that um, in my life, that's sure. He makes me feel like there was a loss in his life, like somebody really close to him. I don't know if it's a brother or a child or something, but he's making me feel like there was a loss, like that he, he dealt with loss. And so he understands this value of life and what the loss of a loved one really means and how it affects all the people around you, whether it's like your best friend or, or um, a relative, somebody you're close to, he says he understands. So he understands the ripple effect that his death had on his family. 
and he's making me showing me like kids but from maybe from different spouses I don't know but he's showing me kids and like disagreement amongst the kids just so you guys know I mean maybe that's public knowledge I have no idea but there's disagreement amongst the children or maybe it's with the estate or something because it looks like there's different views or opinions about how things should be distributed or how things should look moving forward. And it really is about coming from a place of wanting to honor his me memory, his legacy. And there's different views on how that should take place. I don't specifically feel like he's talking about the band at this point. I feel like it's a family thing. So I feel like it's kids or maybe it's his siblings or something like that or significant other and her kids. I don't know exactly, but it, it doesn't feel like the band. It feels like a family thing. Um, but he does show me kids. So he must have had kids. Um, he's also showing me dogs too. Actually, looks like dogs. Two big dogs. Looks like two for sure. So he's might he might be saying that there's two with him. That maybe is it. So, um, did you think the band should go on, like the Eagles? I'm assuming is what. You know, that's it's hard to say that. It's not really my say. I don't have a say. I, I don't get to have a say when I'm not you know, in it. It's not my life anymore, so I can't have a say over that. I don't know. I feel like I left too soon. Yeah, I feel like I left and uh, didn't really have the best opportunity to wrap things up the way I, I would have liked, but you can't change the past. Yeah, I can't change that. Um, I'm sorry about that, though he says, you guys, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about how that all happened. It makes making it feel like it's kind of abrupt. So do you blame the doctors? Oh, so there's medical stuff, of course. Um, should there be a lawsuit? This person asks, oh, I don't wanna get into legal stuff. I'm a psychic medium, I don't do legal stuff. But I mean, it's a fair question, you know? So Glenn, it sounds like there's health stuff. So did you, do you blame the doctors? No, he says, no. He says. How can you blame somebody else for something going on in your body? He says, are you saying, was I, was I mistreated? No, that's not. No, that's not the case. Were there different opinions? Yeah, yes, uh, probably. Could things have been done differently? Yes. Um, am I upset about that? No. Am I angry? No. No. But I understand asking the question. I understand asking the question. You know, I, I, I might ask it if it was uh, my loved one. I might ask it too. But he says, no, I don't really blame any, anyone. What do you miss the most? He's showing me like a uh, hot dogs and ice cream. <laughs> he's like, like the simple things. He's like making me show, he's showing me food, you guys. I don't know if they had some kind of tradition, like hot dogs, like here we go back to like, summertime and baseball in LA, California, outside, beach, you know, hot dogs and ice cream kind of vibes, you know, like that eating crappy. He's like showing me crappy eating, eating bad foods. That's what I miss the most, eating really crappy foods. <laughs> like a chili dog with tons of stuff on it, like that, yeah, that's what I miss. Being able to do that without feeling crappy, you know? I'm like, ah, uh, you know, Glenn, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think that's even possible for us in your human body. Like, I, if I eat crappy, I feel bad too, you know? He said, ah, it means a lot to me though, what I can eat. <laughs> I miss food the most. Yeah, food. <laughs> okay, is your memory being respected? Interesting question. Hmm. There was somebody else that asked a question too. Let me just take a peek. Let me just look at these. There was another one on here. I just can't find it. Um, oh, somebody named Debbie that's just asking me to channel you. Um, so is your memory being respected? That's an interesting question. To ask a spirit that I've never really asked a spirit in that way because respect is a thing that kind of feels like an ego-minded thing or something that's that's we understand in human context, but it's not really a value. I don't know how to explain that to spirit. There's none of that. They don't, oh, are you respecting me or not? Or I think maybe like a leg from a legacy perspective would be an easier way maybe for spirit to connect with that. 
Well, he says, I think respect is okay. I think it's okay to say respect. It, the only memory that really matters is what my family has to survive, has to live with. And I've made some mistakes. He says, I've made some mistakes in my life and I've hurt some people. And, you know, forgiveness is a powerful thing. And it's not something that they have to give to me, but that I, I wish that I could have been more worthy of that, you know? As far as legacy goes, like, is the Eagles, is that band, like, your legacy? Like, do you feel like that is the case? Like, how, how do you want to be remembered? Maybe I should ask you that. Just as part of the, as part of the group, you know, as, as one of the guys. Not, you guys, he's making me feel like not like a front man, but just as one of many that are very talented. He's, like, spreading it out like a team, kind of. They feel like a family, like a team. We didn't always get along. We didn't always see eye to eye. You know, created differences and such. He's showing me his guitar. He must be able to play piano too because I can see a keyboard. Um, and vocals, I know he was on vocals. And I know he played guitar because I saw that. I saw that and that was my brain. Um, just writing music. He says writing music. Being able to create that. Being part of the Eagles is my legacy. There's really not much they could do to, to change that. They, they couldn't do, and they wouldn't do anything that would like damage my reputation or anything like that. And, and that's not really something that there's a concern about. I don't have a concern about that. I'm not, he's not like worried about that, you guys. He's just like, no, no. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling underneath this question a little bit and I'm curious. Are there, like, I don't know if there's like money grabs or anything or something else going on as far as your memory that like monument or statues or anything like that, kind of a thing like that. He says, I would have never wanted anything like that. But I understand that there's, and then I see like Hall of Fame or a, a, some kind of a plaque somewhere that is appropriate or that he says is fitting. He says something about Elvis too. Like, I don't know if he looked up to Elvis or the king of rock. I'm going to be, it's not the king of pop, right? Are you going to talk about Michael Jackson or Elvis? No, Elvis. He's talking about Elvis Presley. Okay. Um, there's some kind of a feeling, a connection. I don't know if it's Tennessee, Memphis, country music. I don't know what the deal is, but there's a connection there. And it feels like Grand old Opry kind of vibe. I don't know if that makes sense, you guys. I don't know if he grew up there. I don't know if he liked Elvis. I don't know. I don't know. If you're a Glenn Fry fan, put that in the comments below. I'm not sure. All right. I know there was another person that asked. Oh. Here's a great way to wrap up this um, channeling session with Glenn Fry from the Eagles band. How was your crossing? This is from Debbie. She asks how your crossing was, your transition, and was it what you expected? That's a great question, Debbie. Thanks for asking. All right. He says, yeah, I, I don't know that I had an expectation. He says, I don't really know that I had an expectation. You know, the whole white light tunnel thing, that, no, that really didn't happen for me. He says, I, I feel like I, I knew that it was getting toward the end. I could feel my body letting go. And it almost feels like I fell asleep and then just woke up someplace else in a different kind of, um, in a different state, he says. Not like state, US state, but like state, state of mind, state of being, that kind of thing. Can you describe to us what that was like when you woke up? He says, I want to be clear, my body was, like, he's showing me his body was in pain. Like, there was difficulty. There was, like, trauma. The body was not working right, and it was not comfortable. And it looks like he was on very high doses of medicine, like morphine or something heavy. And it looks like he was sedated. That's what it looks like to me. Like, he was out of it. Like, out of it. 
like it might have even been like medical induced coma like la the last two weeks looks like particularly like you know if this is coming you know this is coming he knew it was coming or he had the sense that it was coming and last two weeks he's saying something about the last two weeks are important or pivotal and then he does show me that there's some disagreement between the doctors about stuff I don't know if it's about treatment or course of action or where to focus. He must have had multiple things going on because it's like, where do we focus here? And it looks like his body, he's making me feel like his body had already had a lot of medicine in it. And so it was weak. And so it wasn't able to take on the extra stressors of additional pressures on the body. So multiple illnesses, it wasn't able to, to handle that in a way that maybe most people could. So in a way his death was unexpected, but the last two weeks were very pivotal. And he said it was clear that to him that there was a, he says, this is interesting. I haven't heard this for a long time. A choice to be made here by him. So interesting. Okay. So when you like woke up, after you went to sleep and woke up, you woke up on, on the other side. Where did you wake up? Can you talk to us about that? He said, everything was white. He said, it was. He said, to be cliche, <laughs> everything was white. But it was, it's like everything was really bright, super bright, like the whitest white room and the sun and everything, like where you can't see anything, but you don't need to see anything because you just know that everything feels good. Like, like everything that used to be where my body was just felt warm and good. Everything just felt good. Like I felt better than I had felt in years, maybe even ever. You guys, did he have a, um, it's almost like he had Crohn's. Did he have Crohn's disease? I know that there was something lower region, guts, intestines, stuff going on, but did he have Crohn's? That's interesting because that would make sense then why he would say, what do we miss the food, you know? Because <laughs> it would have been a long time since he got deep food. So, is there that sensation in heaven or in the afterlife then? So oh, everything was white, warm. So no body, but kind of like as though you would had a body. Was there anybody there that you know specifically? And he says not, he's saying something about his mother. Um, not in the way that you would expect. He said not in the way your mind would expect someone to greet you. It wasn't like that. It was just this, um, just this it really overwhelming feeling of just warm, warmth like i was warm in a good way you know just good like like love and like uh soft and just really just really felt good you know when you really just feel so good so good everything just feels so good like that that just it's hard to describe how it feels that's the transcendent point he says that's the point at which i transcended and became then aware that i was no longer the person that you see me as or that you identify me with and instead what is part of a, a bigger source of energy so then how can you come and talk to us now how does that work can you talk about that a little bit for us glenn it's as simple as the um the request that you made to connect with me it's a simple it's like he's like showing me showing me looking through like a telescope or a spyglass and seeing that like you're zooming in what you're focusing on and you're zooming into the image that you it, that you are looking at and trying to zoom in on that's how it's coming through so that's how the channel happens that's where you're connected to you're connected to a common recognition of an awareness of what I was or how I embodied uh, a human in a human context. So that is how you will tap into and clearly accept the connection to me, even if I'm just light or, or the feeling of love or the warmth of the sun, that energy. It, it doesn't, that doesn't easily translate because there needs to be words so that the, the mind, the human mind can understand that and process it. So there has to be an acceptable way and it has to be narrowly focused. So you have to zoom in on it, like literally looking like through a spyglass or looking through a lens of a camera and adjusting. That's how it happens. That's the way that I would uh, share that with you to describe it with your viewers so that they would understand how, uh, what this means, how we are, are, are connecting in this way. Wow, okay, that is probably the best way I've ever heard spirit contact by being able to connect with somebody that's an afterlife celebrity and yet they're really just spirit 
how does that work? How can you connect with them? And, but they're still spirit. How does that work? You know, <laughs> that's awesome, Gwen. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And thank you to Debbie and to Phoebe for submitting these requests on the You Choose the Channel video. I will put in the link below to this description on this channeling with Glenn Fry because it was inspired by you guys and your requests, that video, the You Choose the Channel video. So if you have somebody you would like for me to channel, I'll consider it, I will totally consider it. And you can put your questions, five questions for that person on the video comments for you choose the channel video. As for today, we have been channeling with Glenn Fry from the Eagles. My name is Bridget and it's my pleasure to be your host here at Above Life Channel on YouTube where we are inspiring your spirit and filling you with hope, encouraging you to live your life because it's your life after all. That's the point of these channeling sessions, to encourage you to live your life and it's your life after all, so live it live it. Thanks for watching.